come again. It's pretty nerve-wracking. <laughs> but if I learn one thing here in Europe, it's how you face life. It's how you face the adversity that's in front of you. I might be scared right now, but I know that I learn here the confidence that will let me get through this. No one here has had it easy. No one here has had anything handed to them. We all worked and pushed ourselves to make it through. There's some who have had to support a family while trying to do better for themselves. There are people here who have not had the ideal role models to emulate. People who have witnessed things that might lead a lesser individual onto a path that could have very serious and dire consequences. Instead, we chose our own path. We decided that was not going to be us. We decided that we wanted better for ourselves and for our families. We made these decisions and took action. And Europe gave us a platform to change our lives. When I think about my journey here, I can tell you that I'm almost shocked that I'm standing up here right now speaking to all of you today. I'm a product of a broken home. I was born in New Jersey and I never knew my father. At an early age, I moved my, mo my, my mother and my stepfather to Seattle. Life for me there was very difficult. Things at home were not easy. I became very self-destructive because of it. I moved back to New Jersey when I was 18. I was really just running away from my problems. I never took school seriously and I didn't finish high school either. I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I had no ambition, I had no direction. I got my GED to a piece of people around me and I just went right into working, trying to figure out a way to support myself. I also attempted to enroll into a technical school, but all I ended up with was uh, debt and a renewed sense of disappointment after I was rejected by financial aid, so I couldn't continue. A friend of mine encouraged me to become a waiter, which led me into bartending. The money was great, and I could sleep all day if I wanted to. I loved it. I would probably still be bartending if it weren't for two people, David and Bob. David Ortiz, I met him at work. At the time he was attending Europe, I got to know David pretty well. He approached me one day as he was about to start his Europe apprenticeship, and he asked me flat out, what do you want to do with your life? What a question. I felt confused. Why was he asking me this? I didn't have an answer for him. I felt like I was wasting my life and I wasn't happy, but I had no idea what to do about it. I could have lied and said I was planning to go back to school someday, like I normally answer that question. But I told him the truth. He pointed me in the right direction. I came into Europe for an assessment at the Europe office, at the Europe offices later that week. After multiple interviews, I was excited to hear that I was accepted. Fortunately for me, though, Europe was conducting an, evalu an evaluation study at the time and admitted 80 students. They conducted a lottery to assign 20 of those 80 students to a control group. I was assigned to that control group. I didn't get a seat in the program that year. After that, I lost faith. I would probably still be working as a bartender if it wasn't for another special person, Bob. I worked with Bob at a catering home. Bob was a great guy. He was funny, he was charming, and he was hardworking. Bob was also about 60 years old, still bartending and pursuing an acting career. Bob scared me. <laughs> was I going to play Bob? I might have lacked the answers to a lot of things in my life at that time, but I knew I did not want to be Bob. I'd like to thank him because he inspired me to return to Europe and apply again. This time, I was admitted and I was given a seat to join Class 5. Qualities that I uncovered within myself because of the support that we received here. I watched my peers grow and flourish because of the time we spent acknowledging one another. Whether it was good, bad, or both, hearing it from someone else puts it in perspective. I never felt like I had the qualities that people here saw in me. I know now that I'm a stronger person after being a part of this group. Maybe I didn't want to see it, but after being part of, after being a part of this program, I realized a few things. One, I didn't, give, I didn't have it as bad as I thought. Two, I spent a lot of time placing blame on everything and everyone but myself. And three, I didn't give myself enough credit. I apprenticed at Mount Sinai Medical Center where Jack Nelson, the mentor with whom Europe connected me, is the CIO. At first, it was a little overwhelming. Besides learning all the Microsoft Office suites, the technology at Mount Sinai is completely different from what we learned here at Europe. The devices are completely unique to the hospital. 
For example, I rolled out in neurosurgery intensive care, and it was very, very, very different from what we learned here. But Europe prepared me to be a lifelong learner. I grabbed a notebook, I started writing everything down. I also asked my supervisor for weekly feedback sessions, just like in Europe. I introduced myself to people just the way Europe taught me to, including the senior directors, who perceived me as enthusiastic. Jack, my mentor, gave me very sound advice, people I should talk to and projects that I should get involved in. By process of trial and elimination, I figured out what I wanted to do with my life. Yesterday, I started my full-time job at Mount Sinai as technical analyst. On the day that I received my offer, my supervisor told me she started as an analyst 10 years prior, and that there's a lot of room for growth. In addition to the great medical insurance Mount Sinai offers, tuition reimbursement as well. Now I plan to go to college, something I never thought I would do. I would like to thank all of you for supporting Europe by donating, posting apprenticeships, and sharing your time as volunteer or supervisor. I speak for all of my classmates when I say that we are tremendously grateful for all you have done to create this opportunity for us. Class 5, you have given me so much insight into myself and led to such a positive change in me. Not that anyone couldn't tell I wasn't confident before, but I was just keeping all my fear and insecurity bottled inside. Now I feel like I express who I really am. A very competent, very capable, and very hardworking men. We could all have taken the easy path, the path of claiming that many disadvantages that we face as excuses for not achieving our full potential. Whether it's being raised in a single parent home, or in a foster home, or in an abusive home, losing people we care about to violence, or prison, or health problems associated with poverty, going to a dysfunctional school, living in a chaotic neighborhood or housing project with all the wrong influences, or having run-ins with the law, it's true that we have lived a rough life through our young lives. But instead of allowing these experiences to limit us, we have chosen to accept responsibility for our own lives, not to be just another statistic. We chose to take our future into our own hands. With help from Europe, we opened the doors of opportunity for ourselves and stepped through to a better tomorrow. We will all walk different paths from this point on. Some of us will continue with school, others have earned the chance to work for the companies in which they apprentice, and some might be doing both. Let's keep in touch with each other and maintain the bond we formed as a community helping each other through difficult times and supporting the people around us, pulling others up when they couldn't do it on their own, just as we did during Europe. We might think that we walk through life alone sometimes. It's not true. One of the biggest lessons that I learned at Europe is that you are not alone. By lifting as we climb, we provide Europe's to countless other deserving young adults like ourselves.